this is a celebration amen I said this is a celebration on the third day he rose from the grave it's a celebration we serve a living God a resurrected King this is a celebration and the same power that raised Jesus from the grave is the same power that's here today the same power that raised Jesus from the grave that resurrection power is in this place no matter what you're going through no matter what the situation is resurrection power is in the house and there's hope I said there's hope I said there's hope if you're alive and you're breathing which you are because you're here and I can hear you amen I said there's hope to finish this thing strong for the glory of God amen now where are my champions for Christ at? amen amen before you're seated in the presence of the Lord just look at somebody and say you're not a victim but you're a victorious through Christ yeah and you're not looking for victory you've got the victory amen amen and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, just a, 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 a yeah. Uh, uh, um, bef before, um, I just want to say this, and it's actually I'm getting in front of myself a little bit of what I want to share this morning. But you know, I just thought about this. You know, a victim mentality is always I'm, I'm looking for victory a victor mentality understands who they are in Christ that they're a child of God and I'm not looking for victory I already have the victory amen shout I got the victory amen amen praise the lord well uh, good morning and 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 um real quick just um next um next week sunday uh, i want to just get this out of the way um we got the the super bowl super bowl weekend right and um so watch this so what we're going to do is well um, sunday morning service here um we're just gonna have some fun as we always do every year and just wear your favorite jersey amen so let's all wear our jerseys to church is that is that is that is it Someone might say, you can wear a jersey to church yeah, if you're not religious and, and you're in a relationship with God. Amen. Um, it's okay to have fun in church. And um, so, so we want to encourage everybody to wear your favorite jersey. If you don't have a football jersey, wear a baseball jersey. If you don't have a baseball jersey, maybe it's a hockey jersey, whatever, you know, just, just you know, just... You have a, yeah, a sports jerseys, uh, you know, um, with your favorite team. And like I said before, also let me get this out of the way too. And um, and, and the only the only the only thing that is not allowed once again, I said this last night, is Dallas Cowboy jerseys. They're not allowed in this place. And the reason being is we don't want we don't want the we don't want you know because that hinders the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. So. And then we're going to have to pray, and then we're going to have to get into deliverance, and we're going to have to do all this kind of, and I don't got time for that, amen? You don't got time, I don't got time for that, amen? We're trying to, so, so next Sunday, wear, 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 wear your favorite jersey, and, um, and, and let me say this too, um, everyone, uh, you know, it's okay to watch a football game, okay, as long as the football game doesn't go before God. So if someone says, you know, if someone doesn't come to church because, man, I'm just, I got people coming over and I'm preparing for a Super Bowl party later that afternoon, you've missed God. There, 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 you're, there's something wrong with the heart. Amen. It's okay afterwards, you know, if you're going somewhere or even if you're having something, you know, over at the house, prepare the day before. You know, get some things in order. Come to church. Put him first. Because football didn't save you. Football can't deliver you. <laughs> the Kansas City Chiefs aren't going to heal you. 
San Francisco 49ers are not going to set you free. Jesus is your solution. He's not, the, 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 the game's not going to restore you or put food on your table. Amen. So, so, so let's make sure that we, 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 we come to church and then, you know, praise God. You know, have a great time of fellowship and, and you know what? And, and also maybe use it as an opportunity. Uh, maybe if you're having people over, maybe you're going to have some people over that don't come to church or not where they need to be. And that's your opportunity to also minister to them and to, um, um, and to be Jesus and, um, um, and, and let them see um, the new you. Amen. And it's not even as much as what you say, as much as just the way you're, 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 you're conducting yourself. Because back in the day, you know, it, it would be, you know, alcohol and all sorts of crazy stuff going on. And now you're having a gathering, you know, but, but, but it's not the way you used to do it. Amen? Amen. You know, you want something to drink? Yeah, praise the Lord. Well, I got some Coke, Sprite, and Kool-Aid and water. What, where, where, where's the beer at? Well, no, no, I don't do that anymore. Amen. Well, what do you mean you don't do that anymore? Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> I get drunk with Jesus now. Amen. I, I, but I don't, I get filled up with him now. Amen. And praise the Lord. So, so, and then, you know, and, 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 and use that as an opportunity to be a blessing also. Amen. And um, so next Sunday, uh, wear your favorite jerseys, and um, of course, service will start at 10:30. I think the game is like later in the afternoon, like at four or five. Yeah, so plenty of time. Amen. Um, also, um, real quick, um, on the way out, uh, we have your tax um, information from the past year of giving. If you'd like to um, get that immediately, we have um, um, that in the bookstore. Um, this is the last day, so um, if you go in the back, Pastor Tom and Cheryl are back there to make themselves available to you. Um, after today, we, um, we are going to be mailing them out in the next couple days so we can make sure everyone gets everything by the end of the month. If you just want to get it a little bit sooner, it is available here. Amen. Um, um, if not, then those will be mailed out in the next couple days, and you'll be receiving that in the mail. Praise God. Also... Francesca, where's Fr she, why don't you make the announcement of what's happening over here? Um, you know, praise God. So the worship team is looking for um, a new piano because our piano is kind of dying on us. But we know Jesus is alive, so we need a piano so we can still worship him. Amen? Yeah. So we ask that um, if the church would support us, we're actually raffling off this basket right here that has a bunch of goodies. It's worth over like $400, and it's just $5 per ticket. And it'll help to, you know, raise money for the new piano that we're trying to um, raise to worship God. Do you guys like the music in here? Yeah. And God loves it too. So let's continue to praise him. Amen. Praise the Lord. So again, um, you know, just uh, uh, again, it, you know, we're having some fun with this. But the goal is um, to, 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 for the music and the instruments. It's not about the basket, you know, but it's a nice little blessing. Praise the Lord. Um, but, um, and already somebody has already stepped up. I mean, and I know, I know I was like, how much does something like these? And it's like, you know, a couple thousand dollars or something. Yeah. Yeah. 2005. I'm like, what? I'm, I'm thinking, well, 300, $400 or like a couple thousand. I'm like, what? And, um, and anyway, already somebody, you know, God moved on somebody's heart and already gave a thousand dollars towards this. Amen. So, so I just, it's cool. And it's very important to me here in this church, and as I was sharing with somebody earlier, that we handle um, when it comes to, like, raising money or doing anything that's got to do with finances. Because, of course, you know, it, it's necessary. And even right now, I just, um, I'm an, I, I didn't have time. I got pictures because we sent another $5,000 to Uganda for the orphanage. And Pastor George sent me pictures, and they're, they have bricks, and they're doing, they, he had, it's awesome. So this thing is moving forward, so it's really cool. So, but, so it take, you know, it takes finances to do things, but it's very important in this place that we handle it with integrity and, um, and, you know, and, um, it, it's not about money. It's about the people and it's about, you know, um, um, bringing people into a relationship with Jesus, but we, to do it the right way with integrity. And, um, and again, we're not, you know, spending hours on like, you know, if you don't give, you know, we're not going to be, and you're not going to have any music and, you know, and, you know, and the church is going to shut down, you know, like that, that's, you hear stuff like that it's foolish you know you know you know if God's in something and we're doing it the right way God will take care of it but the need is being presented and then God moves on people's hearts amen 
And God might not speak to you to do anything concerning this because maybe God wants to speak to you about doing something somewhere else. Amen. But all we would ask is like, you know, pray about it, you know, if God would have you, you, you give something. And again, so we're going to give this away uh, um, um, on Sunday, Super Bowl weekend. So you got to be here on Sunday to receive it. If the first 10 drawings, no one is here for it, then I'm going to take it. <laughs> so I want to. Again, for integrally, integral purposes, I'm just letting everybody know how this is going to happen. Amen? And I'll just take it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Well, real quick, we're going to take the offering. We're going to move forward. And, and, and I do have a, 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 just a, a, a word of encouragement and, um, 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 on the topic of victim mentality. Um, because it is stealing and taking away people's purpose and destiny. It's keeping people paralyzed from their greatness. But before we get there, um, we're in California, and I shared this the other day too. We're in California um, um, ministering um, um, in, in California with Curbside uh, Ministries and Church Community. They just started a church there, but their ministry is a street ministry. They have um, um, in California, they have uh, an, an LA skid row. They minister uh, uh, out there. They have a, a team there. They also have one in Las Vegas. Actually, the pastor and his wife came down when we came to minister there in California. It was really awesome. So they're doing a great work for God. Um, and the pastor, um, we were talking, and as we we're talking, he was um, talking to me about. Um, we were talking about, like, you know, as far as how he first heard about the church and, you know, and, uh, and it was really cool to hear um, as far as 13 years ago, I guess, he um, was working. Now he's full-time, but he was working part-time, still doing full-time ministry, but still was working a, 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 a job. Um, um, and um, he was driving trucks. He was driving from California to Phoenix, dropping off the load and then picking up another load and taking it back. Well, what, well that transition was taking place here in Phoenix. He ran into somebody that, um, that you know, they started talking. And, he, and, and, then he, the, 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 and then someone gave him, he goes, I want to give you the CD of my pastor. And he goes, okay. So as he started to minister to him, he's, you know, the CD. And the, the brother that gave him the CD was somebody that was in prison that had just got out of prison. Um, and, and, and this was his, their church home. And the CD that he gave him was a CD that he received um, from the prison ministry here at the church. So I have to think about this 13 years ago now. And this is a pastor now that, that's being ministered to. And, um, and we don't know, we've never met back then, obviously. And he gives him the CD and he goes, I want you to listen to this, you know? Uh, so think about that CD was circulating in prison, comes out of prison, comes to church here, he's going to church here, but he's, as he's out there, he's ministering to people and giving and, 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 and handing off a CD that the church, as we send out, you know, uh, material every, you know, every couple months here, um, this is, this is one of the stories. And he goes, that minister to me, I needed, I, I kept on listening to it over and over and over. So that was the first time I actually heard of you, you know, was just listening. I didn't know your face or anything like that. Fast forward um, um, about three years ago or so, or four years, three, three, four years. Um, he came to church here, but he was here with a group um, for spring training um, from the ministry as a way of raising money for the ministry because they would work for spring training games and they would receive a certain amount of money. So they were here and he was at... He was with a group of men, and he goes, I was just ready to lose my mind, basically. You know, just, you know, it was just a bunch of men. It, it, you know, we were together for like over a month. And, um, and he goes, you know, he was just having a difficult time with, you know, with, 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 at that moment. And he remembered the church, the CD, all that stuff. So he ended up coming to church on a Sunday morning. He goes, like, I just stepped away from everybody, and I came to church. He goes, I walked in to the front of the church, and there was eight greeters there. Watch it. Yeah. And, and I, I always say this ministry, really, the, the real ministry is before and after church. I'm going to say that again. You see, it's before and after church. So when he walked in, the, he goes, the people were saying, man, you made it. We're so glad you're here. He goes, as soon as he heard those words and just all the smiles and everybody just receiving him coming in. He goes, the thing that he was dealing with just lifted off of him. And he goes, what I needed, I, I didn't need to hear the word. I didn't need no praise and worship. He goes, God ministered to me as I walked through the front doors. Um, and he goes, it's a, it's a moment that I'll never forget. 
And, um, and then anyway, fast forward now, and you know, we went to minister over there. So man, we are impacting lives. And some, we don't, you know, we'll probably, we might not even hear the stories until we get to heaven, amen? amen. But we are impacting lives, and it's, um, it's, it's, it's bigger than what we can even think, amen? So God bless everyone's faithfulness. So many opportunities to serve in this church, amen. And and no place that we that you serve in this church is insignificant. Just as you heard with this story, a pastor was impacted when he was down by a smile, and we're so glad you made it. That's a powerful message, amen. Praise the Lord. So I also want to say thank you for everybody and for your, your, um, your faithfulness and, and serving. And um, the greatest among them is a servant, the Bible says. And um, if we all do our part together, we do something great and impact many lives for the glory of God. And this is a pastor that's reaching the hurting, the poor, the afflicted, the addicted, and the lost. And God has used this church to help him um, continue to move forward and fuel the fire of what he's doing. Amen? Praise the Lord. Awesome. Look at someone and say, awesome. 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 Amen. Praise God. Uh, uh, um, Chaplain, will you, P P Pastor Lee, would you come up and pray for the offering, please? Please. Is everybody ready to give on today? Yes. Praise the Lord. Lift up your offering to the Lord. Father, we thank you again for this day that you have blessed us with. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence one more time. God, as we prepare once again to give back to you, just a portion of what you've given to us, Lord. We thank you because you're going to use it to press it down, shake it together, let it runneth over for the increase and the outpouring of what you're about to do yet in this ministry. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you for the upgrade of the keyboard. We believe in advance because we know that your credit is good. So we thank you in advance. We thank you, Lord, for everyone in this room that has to give and has not, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you to bless those that have not, that on the next time, they will be able to give with a cheerful heart. As they give right now, just a praise unto you. We give you the glory, the honor, and all is lifted up to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the church say, Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Praise the Lord. And just um, also, as we... Um ushers yeah go ahead and serve the people don't forget tomorrow night prayer seven o'clock and wednesday night life groups we have our final lesson on our words amen which has been off the hook for off the hook praise god you know what where's my real quick hold on a second my brother and my sister that came out to outreach and my brother what's your name again that you, you just shared your testimony outside with me pete come up here you guys come up here real quick come up here come on, come on, come on. i just i just as i'm looking i just i just Praise God. Real quick, real quick, real quick. I don't want you, would you do me a, just just a couple minutes. I cause just encourage everybody here because this is what it's all about, amen. And your name? Pete. Amy. Amy. Okay. It, Pete just shared a, 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 an awesome testimony. And um, and what's awesome is today they're serving in the, in the kitchen, and um, it's just really awesome. And, and one of the keys to keeping and protecting your victory is when you get in, start serving, get involved. That's part of your restoration and your healing, amen? Because when you take care of God's house, God takes care of your house. When you take care of God's business, God takes care of your business. You came to outreach yesterday morning, and, um, and you shared your testimony of how you found out about the church. So just real quickly, just a brief testimony, and then I want you to share what happened with your job and that whole situation with, your, with the house. Okay, so um, it was like four years ago, I think. Uh, I was walking by the church, and God said, you're going to go in there. And I'm like, I'm not going in there. God said, you're going in there. And I'm like, I'm not going in there. Because I was really deep in my addiction. And, um, and he says, you're going in there. I said, I'm not going in there. And he told me one more time, you're going in there. So I put my pipe in the bushes right across the street. And I walked in. But I, I didn't go any further than the doorway right there. Um, but um, I just started crying and crying. Because I used to live at um, church on the street. I did eight years in prison. And, and like when I got out. I had to give my my whole life to God, and um, and then I just felt like I failed Him, so um, I went into my addiction. But when I went in there, when I was in that room, and I didn't come through, like every song that played was all of the songs that really I, they were my favorite songs that I f I felt the Holy Spirit with, and so and so um, 
So the other, uh, it was like last week, I think last Saturday, I was just watching TBN, and then I seen this church, and I noticed that it was from um, Phoenix. And they're talking, and it showed like all of the outreaches that they do, and I love to do outreaches, and, I, and we're newly sober, so I was like, oh, I wonder, I, I think maybe I'll go to that church. And I just caught a glimpse of the address, which was 1937 East Diamond. Yeah. And, um, and so I looked, well, my husband, my husband usually works until seven, but he got home early on Monday and I'm like, babe, let's go to this church. It's over here. Off, it's over here by McDowell somewhere. And so we come over here and I walked up and I didn't even realize, but this is the same church that that happened in. And then it's really crazy too, because when, um, when we walked all the way through, <laughs> um, but we were, we we uh, we were a half an hour we were a half an hour late and we only got the one song but it was breakthrough, and so God is wonderful. Oh. Um, I was just telling the pastor. Um, I'm from California, so um, I haven't been here too long. Uh, my wife's from here, but she hasn't. Been. Well, anyway, um, I came down here and um, me and my wife two weeks ago. we were, we're actually living in a tent. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, we were living in a tent. Um, I was out there asking for money, trying to make feria, I mean money to take care of my wife. And um, one day, um, and we were, we were getting high, you know. So I don't know why, I don't know why God did it. But anyway, God sent some people to us, um, some man and, and his wife, and um, they're a blessing, man. They they offered us, you know, a, a place to stay. They gave us a a little apartment that it's like it's a little room, but it has, it, has its, it has its own entrance to its restroom. Like, like we're living large right now. You know what I'm saying? And, and, uh, and uh, not, not, only, not only did he do that, but when the man took us in, you know, um, he went and took me to go get $100 worth of boots. He gave me $1,000 worth of tools. And then I, I, I got a job. And now, now I'm working at a job making $20 an hour. I mean, and, it, it, it don't get it don't get no better than that, Holmes. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a convict. I did 16 years in prison, and you know I, I don't deserve God's mercy. I'm 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 not I'm not good at all. But but He loves me and my wife. You know what I mean? And He loves you guys too, man. Could someone celebrate with them, Amen? Isn't that awesome? And what really and my blessed me was when my sister shared that even yesterday morning, and then you came and just shared. And they were here last night's service and just, um, and she was saying how, you know, they've been clean now for how long. And I, you know, I forget how many days you said, or weeks. It's been weeks, three weeks. And um, loving people back to life, amen, um, is that they've, they're here. She was here for outreach. She's, they're involved. They're, they're serving this morning. And um, that blessed me because I'm like, man, if you keep that focus. And keep him first and be and just and you don't have to wait a year to get to okay when can i do something for god in the church right now yes. amen and um and um, um wonderful testimony praise the lord and and it's only the beginning amen and um and and and, and, and like I, I i like to say it like this once again welcome home yes. celebrate with them Everyone, let's stand to our feet and let's praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord here this morning.
grace we thank you for your mercy we thank you for not giving up on us we thank you for not giving up on us and we bless your name in this place in Jesus name and everyone said amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord you be seated in the presence of the Lord. Awesome. If you have your Bibles, um, 
or just also or if you don't we'll have it up on the screen um, the gospel of saint john we're going to be in the gospel of saint john chapter five just for a few minutes look at somebody just say just for a few minutes yeah i won't be long oh you know that's right amen all, all, all that I've been through, anyone, can I get a witness, you know what I mean? You know, and, and, and with the revelation and the understanding that I should not even be here right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Whatever God wants. Uh, St. John, St. John, chapter 5. St. John, chapter 5, and, and um, verses 1 through 9 will be our text this morning. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? And Jesus here this morning asked the same question to us. Do you want to get well? Look at somebody and say, do you want to get well? <laughs> Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me. Watch this now. I want you to pay attention to these words. The question is, do you want to get well? Verse 7, the response is, Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Mm. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. Watch this. Uh, verse 9, um, the man was cured. Um, We'll talk about that at the tail end of the message. Um, in chapter 5 of the book of John, Jesus found a man by a pool where he and many others lay sick and diseased in various ways. The location was Bethesda, a supernatural site where an angel would come down and stir up the waters. When this angel would swoop down and touch the waters... The first person to jump in was healed of whatever disease they had. Talk about an amazing opportunity. Talk about an opportunity that is before you. To instantly be healed. Jesus walked up to the man who had been afflicted with an infirmity for 38 years. The first thing we can see here is that Jesus knew that this man did not get sick in a week or a week ago. This disease had gripped this man for most of his life. One thing Jesus could know is that someone who has a disease for a long time can end up wrapping, watch me, their identity around their disease. What comes against us, catch this, catch this, catch this. I can't see anybody because these are reading glasses. What comes against us can end up becoming a part of our identity if we are not discerning. Watch this. The question Jesus asks confronts the victim mindset. 
right from the start. When you read this account, it seems as though Jesus is being a little uncaring, at least by our today's standards. He doesn't ask for the man's story regarding what factors got him to this place. He doesn't ask him any of that. Um, his question hits the core of the man's heart and motivation. Do you really want to be healed? Do you really want to be healed? healed the response watch me now should have been immediately yes. immediately you would think that the response would have been immediate and the shout would have been Being there for 38 years in that condition and someone's asking you that has the power, the ability to turn things around, to bring breakthrough, to bring victory, to bring healing, to bring restoration in your life. You would think, look at someone say, you would think the response would have been immediate and it would have been yes. But we don't see that. What we see is, watch this, the sick man answered him. The question was, do you want to be made well? So Jesus is asking, yes or no? And, and this man's response does not answer that question. His response, the Bible says, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus didn't ask about the story. Jesus just asked him, do you want to be made well? And then he goes into the story. Watch this. Victim mentality, victimization doesn't answer that question with an immediate yes because it would draw a oh god you're not ready for this no you're not no you're not no you're not no you're not watch this because it would draw a line in the sand of what would be required from this day forward if he says yes then he is personally responsible from now on so instead he gives a list of reasons why he hasn't been able to get into the pool he would be personally responsible if he responds yes he would be personally responsible well, let me say it like this it would it would require if he responds yes to stop looking back to move forward and it would require accountability in his life and let me say this you understand if we are to accomplish 
the greatness, the God-given dream, the assignment as a church, as a people, it will demand, it will require accountability. Without it, without accountability, without accountability, we cannot fulfill the purpose of God. Because it's accountability that keeps us on track. It's accountability that calls us out. Uh, it's accountability when you're tempted to look back, when you're tempted to do something you shouldn't do. Accountability hits you over the head and says, hey. See, to say yes, it requires accountability. And this man had become comfortable in his victim mentality because it would be required to become uncomfortable. It would require others to get in his business. But if you want to get to where you need to go for God, if you want to get, I always say when you're here, you can't go there. There meaning a negative place. But now I'm flipping it. If you want to go from here to there where God wants you to go, it will require a yes, not looking back, and allow the accountability that God wants to bring into your life. We don't, we don't like that. We don't want people in our business. If it, but watch this. I wouldn't be standing here today if I didn't have people in my business. We need people in our, the right people in our business. The right people in our business. My wife, just the other day, I was, I got up and I was tired and I started, I know it's hard to believe, I started to complain a little bit and, and just kind of, I had a moment. And she's like, come on, soldier. You're a soldier of God. And she's like, right here, right now. Come on, I want to hear you. Know, you know, you've heard us. And she's like, come on, I want to hear you right now. Right here, right now. I'm like, I'm like, she, I'm thinking, she'll leave me alone right now. Amen. <laughs> and she's looking at me, and we're, in the, we're right by the kitchen. And she's like, come on, soldier. And so many words. And she's like, right here, right now. I want to hear you. Right here, right now. <laughs> See, accountability doesn't allow you to lay paralyzed. Reliving and talking about why you're still there. Accountability says right here, right now, snap out of it. Amen. Are you hearing me? Uh, so, 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 to, 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 so what I want to say, two is better than one. So we need accountability, and God will not bring you to a higher place or bring increase into your life if your answer is not yes. And the further you go and the higher you go and the more that God trusts you with the assignment, accountability does not become less, it becomes more. Are you with me? Watch this. So, so instead, though, because he didn't want that in his life, he gives a list of reasons why he hasn't been able to get into the pool. If you really think about it, 38 years, if you know, if I can get to that pool, if I, I, can, if I can get to that place, I, I could be made well. You might say, well, others are in front, and he's paralyzed, and he can't get there. Okay, I can understand in the beginning. I can understand after a few months. I can understand after a couple years, you know. But when you think about it, 38 years, if you know that that's a place of victory, that that's a place of liberty, that's a place where, man, I can, I can get back up. I, I can get back up. You would think I 
I don't know. I'm, this is the way I think. You would think, even though he's paralyzed, and you know he's been there for a long time, so he's got a little hustle in him also. We're my hustlers. So, you know, he's been out, he's been out there. He's, he's out on the street. He's there. So, 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 you know, he's telling Jesus his story, but the reality is, watch this now, he's been out there. So if he really, you know what I'm talking about. When you really wanted to get something, boy, you found a way to get it. Am I in the right church? I said, am I in the right church? Yeah, you found a way. It's an amazing thing. When you really want to get to church, You'll get to church. You know, sometimes people come, it's like, I couldn't in this and that and all, and all, the, and, and all the, the thing. It's not like, really, if you set your mind to something, then you're prepared and you're ready. So no matter what comes, you, may, you, find, you find a way. You find a way. You found a way to go from one side of the town to the other side of town to get a $10 bag. And now you're going to tell me that you can't make it to church? My car broke down. Yeah, but your car broke down when you were paralyzed in your addiction. And your car wasn't running. And you got on a bike. Then you got on a bus. Then you hitchhiked. And then... And then it's an amazing thing, isn't it? So when you think about it, when you, when you think about it, he could have, 38 years, I'm thinking, man, if I can, the, the water, and there's others, the first one that gets in, right? Okay, well, I'm thinking, I, I'm talking to some people around me as they're walking by. I'm sure that he's been um, begging for some money also. So, 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 so I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, some money's adding up. He's got a little bit of something. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to grab somebody that's got some two healthy legs. I'm going to say, listen, buddy. The next time this water is stirred here, you get me there first. This is yours. Yeah, there's a little, you see this? You see this hundred? You say, well, he's paralyzed. A hundred dollars. Listen, 38 years. 38 years if you want to move forward, if you want to get well, if you want to be healed. But you can't do that if you got this victim mentality and thinking of the past and what happened and why. You stay paralyzed. It takes away your future. It takes away the opportunity from being the voice that God's called you to be, being the champion that God's called you to be. And being the blessing that God's called you to be. The miracle that God's calling you to be in somebody else's life. I'm thinking to myself, 38 years, man. Or better, yeah, okay, he doesn't have, well, maybe money-wise, that I'm getting a hold of someone and say, listen, man, you get me in that water. I'm going to make a deal with you. I'm going to take care of you later. You get me in that water? I got you later. There's a lot of different ways that he could have made his way closer and closer to his place of victory. Do you see it? But he started to talk about this is what's going on and I can't get there. and Someone gets in front of me. So another year goes by. And is it the truth? Wait, wait, wait. Is it the truth? Now, I'm not saying it's not the truth. I'm not saying it, that someone else doesn't go before him. It's not that, that what he's saying is not true. But he has parked there. And by parking there, Jesus is saying, do you want to be made well? Because this is where, there, you, there's an answer. There's a solution. And you're, you're better than this. And I have more for you. But his response was, he started talking about his condition. His issue. His, 
what's happened to him. And so by doing so, another year goes by and another year goes by and another year has gone by. Today, God is saying, do you want another year to go by like this? When the opportunity is in front of you and Jesus is saying, do you want to be made well? A victim mentality. Watch this. Watch this. Let me just let me put my glasses on. A victim promotes rescuing with very little personal participation. Very little personal participation will keep you in the same place. I'll give you a definition. A victim mentality is when you blame everyone else. This is where I was trying to get to. Because we need to push forward. We need to break loose from this thought process. A victim mentality is when you blame everyone else for what happens in your world. I'm where I'm at because of this. I'm where I'm at. And I'm doing what I'm doing, and I'm responding the way I'm responding, and I'm acting the way I'm acting because of what happened five years ago. And I'm not minimizing, watch me, because some of the things that have happened to some people, you had no control over, and it's real. But if you don't let it go, and you don't respond yes, You'll live there for the rest of your life. And the next thing you know is, where did all the years go when you have the opportunity to let go, be made well, and watch that, and go be a miracle to somebody else's life and help somebody else that might have gone through what you've been through. But it's going to demand, it's going to require accountability. It's going to require to allow people into your business. And it's not comfortable, but it's worth it. So watch this. A victim mentality is when you blame everyone else for what happens in your world. A victim mentality is when a person thinks that the future only holds bad things for them. They, all, they see nothing but the negative. Not the opportunity. Always the negative. Always seeing the negative. And always blaming others. And when we do that and we live there, we become paralyzed like this man. And Jesus is asking, and he's not minimizing what you've been through. But he knows, but he's not knowing what you've been through, but he knows and identifies with your pain. Yeah. What, what, what? Jesus? Yeah. Healed, delivered, set free, goes to the cross? Yeah. People that said, Hosanna, Hosanna on the highest, they were celebrating him. The same people said, turn around and said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Talk about someone that could have had a victim mentality. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Betrayed? beaten, bruised, and then on the cross, he made a choice. Mary, he was God, but he was also human. So there, he was the God-man. So he still had to make the choice. But if he was identifying like this paralyzed man and started to think like, man, here I am doing this for everybody, and look at what they've done. Think, I just want you to think about that. But he made a choice. In other words, he's responding to what his question was to this paralyzed man. His choice was, huh, I'm not a victim. This is a victorious moment. Forgive them for they know not what they do. He doesn't go back and start to, no. He continues forward with his purpose, his assignment, 
comes out of the grave, and because of him, here we are today. So watch this. So it's not like the God doesn't know our pain. He identifies the hurts, the pains. But at a certain point, we could sit there and talk something to death, continue to blame everybody else, but the person that loses at the end, the person that gets hurt at the end, the person that continues to be paralyzed in the end is ourselves. And somewhere along the line, when you know there's a solution, because God's asking the same question here today, you can talk about the story, and there's a place to get it out. But once it's out, then let's get to the solution, let's get the healing, and let's move forward and be the blessing that God's called us to be. Be the champions that God's called us to be. Oh, Here's a couple stories. Here's a couple stories of a victim mentality. Just a couple, okay? Okay. If you had a motorcycle wreck, it's not because you were drinking and driving. It's because the motorcycle threw you and you were distracted by another car. You are the victim. Your best friend called and said she could not have dinner with you oh, because she needed to study. She is always doing that to you, not showing up. You'll show her. You won't invite her when you go out again. Instead of remembering, she has just started school and you did call her at the last minute. The teacher... In your Bible study, ask Sally, we'll just say Sally. You can fill in the blank. <laughs> to answer the question, even though you had your hand up first, the people at that church really are not very nice. They are just a big click, and you will always be on the outside because you raised your hand and you weren't called upon. Look at someone say, just saying. If a parent with a victim mentality's child gets in a fight at school, <laughs> now we're really coming home, amen. Church in the hood. It wasn't their fault. It's because the teacher wasn't watching the room and the other, the other kid had it coming. And someone else told them to hit him so their child didn't do anything wrong or doesn't need to take any responsibility. He was just a victim. Are you hearing me? If you do not get the promotion, it is because Miss Johnson was out to get you. It wasn't because... Mr. Johnson, I'm sorry, was out to get you. It wasn't because he found you playing on the internet every day. You are the victim, and after all, he never liked you from the beginning, and you knew it. Are we good? victim mentality keep you paralyzed I think about my wife and her story too you know her testimony and she has shared before where when she was younger she had an abortion and her mom you know you know kind of forced her to get that abortion and and and, and when you think about you know there was the opportunity man to, to settle there and to be that paralyzed person and you heard her say here that you know what but 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 see Jesus came to her and said, do you want to be made well? Yeah. Now she could have went back to that place and kept on reliving that place over and over and over. And I'm sure there was like, you know, process and I'm sure she would tell you that that, you know, wasn't just like an overnight thing, but somewhere along the line before her mom went and, and passed on, 
she was able to forgive her mom. That, that's called letting it go. And watch this. And watch it. Responding to the question, do you want to be made well? And today, she's sharing her story that's bringing hope to others. <laughs> not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's... That it... Not minimizing what you've been through. It's like, oh, no big deal. But at a certain point, do you really, you know what? There's a point where it's like, okay, because we all have a story, right? But there's a certain point if we want to grow, if we want to move forward, and we want to experience the miracle of God in our life, but not just the miracle of God in our life, but to be the miracle in other people's life, we have to quickly respond to the opportunity, to the question, do you want to be made well? I don't, we're not, we, don't, we don't need to go back there anymore. Do you want to be made well? And even last, last week, my wife shared on Saturday morning to the women our little one got, was under the weather, so she wasn't able to make the following services that I preached at. There was three more. And this one lady, I'm trying to encourage someone. I'm using my, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I, my wife to encourage you because God's not a respect of persons because I know you can identify with some of the things that she's been through. And, and so this lady comes up to me, and she goes, the following service. And, she, and I had mentioned, I don't know if my wife's going to be able to make it because of our little one. So she might be here. She might not be here. And this lady's like, well, I'm not going to be able to come back. But, man, your wife inspired me Saturday morning. And she had something for her. And she's like, could you give this to your wife? And, and, and she goes, she inspired me. I really don't talk about this to, 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 to people. But I was bipolar. I, I've been struggling with being bipolar and schizophrenia. And when your wife shared her story, it inspired me and it gave me hope. Watch this. But if she was to respond to the question, do you want to be made well? And started to relive when she was on psych meds or when she struggled with her alcohol situation and her abortion and almost went away from manslaughter she'd still be there or maybe locked up or wouldn't even be around anymore. But she made a choice that I'm better than this. God's got greater for me. And she made a decision and now it's flipped where now she's a blessing and bringing hope from her past, from God's point of view, to bring healing to others. I remember... I remember, a while ago back, I was going through a difficult, dark season in my life. And as I identified with this man that was paralyzed, and I know God was trying to get a hold of me, and in so many words, he kept on saying, do you want to be made well? And I kept on looking at, I'm where I'm at. I'm going through what I'm going through, and I was blaming everybody. I was justifying everything. This is real. And I'm where I'm at because of this, this, and that. And by doing so, I was justifying my condition. And actually, feeding my condition. Ooh. But it was when I came to a place of being honest, transparent, and God showed me my heart. He showed me the harm and the hurt and the damage I did to others. Jesus. Not that... Some of the other things that took place weren't real. But the bottom line, what he was trying to say is, <laughs> I'll take care of them. That's not, that's not your business. I'm concerned about you and your condition and where you're at. And I can't take you and get you out of where you're at 
and raise you up to fulfill your purpose if you keep on having this mentality that you're the victim. Finally, at some point, my response was, yes, I'm better than this. Yes, I want to be made well. Yes, I want to fulfill your purpose. Yes, yes, yes. And today I stand here better because of it. Will try to take me out. But if I would have kept on living there and kept on talking about that, I couldn't be where I'm at today to have the heart that I have today for the people of God. To have understanding, compassion. It fueled me and it's propelled me for the assignment, more wisdom, more fire, more passion. Because finally, the response was yes. Don't talk about only. There was a season where I kept on talking about every scenario and why and this and who and what. I don't do that anymore. Now I'm just thankful what God has done. And I'm not going to let my past hinder me, hold me, and steal my future. But I'm going to take my past in the hands of God. And it's going to become a weapon to bring hope and encouragement and solution to people's lives. Can someone say amen? amen. A victim man, let me just give you one more and then I'm, I'm bringing it home. Are you, are, are you all right? Are you saying yes to that or are you saying yes to Jesus? <laughs> Shout both. Which one first? Yeah, because if you say yes to Jesus, then you're going to be all right. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, uh, I was pulled over one time. I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> Anybody been pulled over in here? <laughs> Anybody been pulled over driving dirty? <laughs> all right, I just want to make sure. <laughs> so anyway, I, pull, I pulled over, and I was just thinking about this because I thought to myself, like, you know, uh, uh, cause this police officer, you know, and just like, listen, and just like you have good and bad, it, it, you know, you have it everywhere. You, churches, you got it in business. You got, so just because one or two, it doesn't make the rest of them not good. Is there, is there some people that are missing them? Yes. But, but watch this. So I got pulled over and this police officer for, I got pulled over. It was just going off on me. And I believe he crossed the line. I believe he crossed the line. And for a while there, I was thinking, man, you know, I need to get a lawyer. I need to do this. I need to get. And then finally, at a certain point, I started to realize, and I really believe he crossed the line. I was like, man, I'm paying you. I'm the one that you're getting a paycheck because of me. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, you know. <laughs> you know, give me the ticket and let me go. I don't need to hear the drama. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I wasn't, deni I wasn't being difficult, but he was just trying to make his point. That you could have and this and that and it. okay, okay, you're right. I like to see you without your badge on. No, I just no, 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 Praise the Lord. Someone's probably saying, like, from the last message, you know, if it came out of your mouth, it's in your heart. <laughs> okay, I'll, I've got to work on that. Amen. Maybe there's still some lingering effects. The point I'm just trying, I'm just trying to make, the point I'm trying to make was that, 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 that at a certain point, man, I, 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 it was bugging me. And I'm thinking, man, I'm going to do something. I'm going to hire. I'm taking this guy. I'm going to court for this. I'm, you know, this guy crossed the line. And then God started to show me the reality is if you would have been doing the right thing, you wouldn't even be in the position you're in for that to have happened. Watch, I'm just, it didn't make what he did right. I believe that. But God's saying, okay, but, but, but how about taking personal responsibility for your actions? 
for your little crazy self. Because you're coming out acting like you're the victim. But the reality was, when he pulled you over, he was in the right. You broke the law. So it puts you in a position, and God was saying, if you didn't break the law, and you would have been doing the right thing, you wouldn't have been in that position for that to take place. Oh, God. So God was saying, why don't we focus on that and let go of this and let's move forward. Did you get that? The victim mentality is like, look at what they did. Look at what they did. Look at what they did. Sometimes you wouldn't have been in that position or in the arena for that to have happened if you were doing the right thing. Come on, that was a word right there. And people are coming out like they're innocent and they're angels and I've never done anything wrong. And the reality is this would have never even happened if you would have been where you needed to be. And God's saying, now take some responsibility and let go of this nonsense and move forward in Jesus' name. Could someone say amen? amen. Did I say that all right? But if I do see him on the street, no, I'm just kidding. I don't even know what he looks like. Amen. I can't even remember. I can't even remember. I can't even remember. Let me just. You, you know, you know when I see Pastor Tody up here, I, he's smiling because you, 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 you've been there. Amen. <laughs> you little crazy person. You amen for Jesus. This man of God last week, and I heard every, I, I went back and heard both of us say, what great messages last week, and amen. I like it like that. Man, the spirit of the house, great job, great job. Had to go back, you know, make sure, you know, that he's not preaching another gospel or anything, amen. <laughs> Let me just finish this, and I bring this home with this. Let me just give you this, and then I'm done. Victim mentality thinking will be seen in how we speak. They will usually take great pains to share their troubles and negativity with you. And there's a place for that. I've been there. But it just continues and it continues and it continues. And it, Do you hear what I'm saying? Victim mentality people are extremely self-centered. I'm going to get a lawyer. I can't believe it. I'm paying for his paycheck for my taxes. Self it's all about it's me, 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 me. It's all, it's all centered around me. They will rarely, if ever, ask you anything about yourself. You can sit with these people for a couple of hours talking, and it will never occur to them to ask you anything about your life. You sit there, and all of a sudden, it's just, this is what, and it's like, my God, slow down. <laughs> Has anybody been there? I, I know I've been on the other side of that also. I'm just being honest. I've been there. I've been there. And you don't take the time to ask, you know. And probably what they're going through is far greater than what you're going through. Victim mentality causes one to complain about everything that happens to them. Nothing is ever their fault. Victim mentality thinking causes them to hold on to every injustice, every hurt, every pain, and they refuse to let go. Look at someone and say, let go. So watch this song as I finish. Are you glad you came this morning? Watch this. I'm trying to... I'm not saying that it's not real. It's not that it's some, some things, you know, my heart goes out when I hear some stories. All I'm saying is, though, at a certain point, though, Jesus is saying, do you want to be made well? And then if you could see what he wants to do and how he sees you and what he wants to do with you and how he wants to, for you to be a miracle in somebody else's life, the response is yes. Because aren't you tired? I know I've been there. Aren't you just tired of talking about it over and over? It gets tiring after a while, doesn't it? 
breaking it down and analyzing it. And at a certain point, it's like, man, I just want to be free. I want to move forward and I want to help people. So the story, so Jesus, Jesus, so Jesus healed him because you might say, well, he, he still healed him. Well, he was also trying to make a point to everybody that <laughs> you don't need water to heal you. All you need is Jesus. <laughs> if you send a thousand dollars, you'll get some water and you can sprinkle it on you and you're going to be healed. Look at him and say, all you need is Jesus. All you need is Jesus. So he, he asks the question. The guy starts to give him his story. But then he turns around because people were all around watching. And he's trying to make a point. I'm here. The healer is here. The, you don't need this. Any, what you need is So even though, because later on, he still returned back to some stuff. And then Jesus catches up to him. I think the story goes in the end. And he goes, you know, if you keep on sinning, amen. amen. Verse 14. But that's not, I don't want to go there today. I'm just, but the point was, again, he did the miracle to get the point across to everybody that healing, the answer, the solution, restoration, breakthrough, freedom, is in the name of Jesus. Amen. To move forward, you got to let go. And to, and to get a victor mentality, a victor mentality, not a victim mentality, you have to have a different mindset. The mind of Christ. That's why you have to have the Word of God in your life. Know the Word of God and the promises of God in your life. When you know that and you know how God sees you, how God looks at you and sees you and what he has for you, it helps you wake up every morning and shout, I'm victorious. I'm not looking for victory. I have the victory. A victor mentality we cross over from being a victim mentality. He says, I can do all things through Christ. He strengthens me. He wants you and me to be more than conquerors through him. He wants you to be free from anger, bitterness, and revenge and malice. God wants you to have his mindset. Yes, stuff happened in our childhood. Yes. Your wife or maybe your girlfriend or your boyfriend left. Yes, you got fired. Yes, you suffered a loss. This is real. But God wants you to have the mindset that as his child, good things are going to happen to you as well. As his child, you are here of God and a joint here with Jesus. You are the son. You are a son and a daughter of God. You have Christ's power in your life to help you overcome. Well, I've got hurt. I was emotionally wounded. I was greatly grieved by what happened. Then you need to come to Jesus and get healed. He is your healer. He can wipe away your tears. The difference between an overcomer and someone who has succumbed to being a victim is if they are willing to come and get healed and then adopt and then adopt and then adopt the mindset of Christ. So Jesus asked the question, do you want to be made well? Let's stand to our feet. And be a miracle in somebody else's life. Let go. Let him heal you. Let him restore you. And then move forward and be great for him.
be the champion that God's called you to be. And where the enemy tries to bring up the things you've been through and all the 38 years, just like this man, you turn around because you have the mindset of Christ now. You take that. All things work together for the good for those who love God. And I call the coordinators purpose. You take that and say, man, no, I'm going to use this to help someone come out of the pit of hell. I'm going to use this to bring healing and restoration. I'm going to use this to be a miracle in somebody else. I'm going to use my story, the thing that tried to take me out, the thing that had me paralyzed, the thing that had me uh, <coughs> thinking that I'm a victim. I'm going to use that story to bring hope to somebody that wants to quit. To bring life to somebody that wants to check out. I'm going to make every day count. I'm going to make every minute count. Because God loves me. Because God is crazy about me. Because God never gave up on me. Because God is trusting me with his message of hope salvation and deliverance i am a walking solution i'm not what i used to be i am a child of god i am anointed i am dangerous i am a mighty voice for god i am a walking solution i'm a walking solution walking solution some of you are going to find it hard to believe do you believe I was going to read all this I have I am blessed I am forgiven I have hope I got it right you see it I am gifted I was going to I was going to I was going to try to transition to get us to get I wanted to give you a little bit of God's mindset for us because I don't change stuff That'll pull you, that'll pull you out of, that'll get you back up. And then where you're blaming everybody else, actually you start to have compassion for everybody else. You have a love for everybody else. I have to take it away because I might start with that list. I want to finish today. I want to finish today. I believe this is going to be powerful. Simply by saying this. Just simply by saying this. Same question that was asked to paralyzed man. Do you want to be made well? Nothing else. Not yesterday. Not last week. No, 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 don't even. Simply, do you want to be made well? Do you want to go from victim to victor? Do you want to move forward? What I want to do is, just for the next few minutes, I just want to open up this area. I just, I don't, I just believe as we worship, just, and please, I'm really feeling the leading of the Holy Spirit here. I don't want anybody praying for nobody. You don't need a pool. You need Jesus. I believe as we worship and you just respond, yes, Lord. I don't want to lay there for another year. I don't want to lay there for another month. I don't want to lay in this area, in this condition for another day or another minute. I want to leave this place a victor. I want to be free. Heal my heart. Heal my mind. Heal me and use me to be a miracle in somebody else's life. If that's you here today, I just believe God's going to go deep into your heart tonight and touch your heart as you respond without hesitation to yes, Jesus. Forgive me. Forgive, this is between you and the Lord. Forgive me for my complaining. My mur I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Forgive me. Forgive me for not taking responsibility for myself. Forgive me for not being accountable. But from this day forth, I want to be accountable to you and the people that you bring in my life so I can fulfill my purpose. 
I want to learn from what I've been through, grow from it, and move forward and use it for your glory. If that's you in this place, how many people would say, I needed this this morning? Just lift up a hand. What I want to do is right now, I want us just as, as we worship just for a few minutes and we'll dismiss, step out of your seat and just find a spot as close as you can. And I want us to corporate just worship and God's going to start touching hearts right now. Quickly. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. No weapon made come on. Form, but come on. This is glorious. Closer. Come on. Hallelujah. When the dark come on. Is false, Hallelujah. Just get as close as you can. Come on. My God. Because the God I serve knows only Just get as close as you can. Triumph. Hallelujah. Come on. My God will as you can. God sees your heart as a step of faith. Oh my God will never
not the way you start it's the way you finish God loves you this is what God said God hasn't given up on you you're forgiven when you call upon his name he's got a plan and a purpose he wants to bless you so you can be a blessing this is who you are as a child of God you're on top and not beneath a victim mentality has a mindset that I'm I'm, the, I'm at the bottom I'm always at the bottom this is because of this and this. no you're on top and you're gonna keep on rising you're on top so you can help others get to the top you're blessed going in and you're blessed going out God has a plan God has a purpose not an accident not a mistake I'm a walking solution not because I'm saying it because God says that about me that's who I am I am forgiven I am set free I am healed I'm delivered I'm restored I am a mighty man of God I am anointed I am dangerous I am a mighty voice for God I am blessed to be a blessing that's who you are that'll change things that'll get you up that'll let's be great together I said let's be great together and let's help others be great I want to pray this prayer together if you've never given your heart to Jesus the miracle starts with the relationship with him it says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved I want to pray then I have my wife Sheila I want you to just pray um, in closing man I'm telling you God's doing I'm telling you there's there's some things that are gonna that have shifted here this morning just by you responding yes you just making the decision it's like no I'm not staying there anymore enough I just want you to close in a prayer of healing and restoration for everybody here There's someone that's been through much and now is walking in victory I was walking in victory when I'm half asleep and I'm complaining and she's like come on soldier I'm like oh man I, I was like man that's what I say somebody's listening amen come on soldier come on I want to hear you right here right now it's awesome it's called accountability it's called accountability pray this prayer with me Heavenly Father I need you I'm a sinner and I need a Savior forgive me of my sins and I believe you sent your son Jesus to this earth for me and those who call upon his name shall be saved Jesus I call upon your name save me help me wash me with your blood and renew a right spirit within me from this day forth I'm all yours I'm all yours. I believe that I'll never be the same after today because of you. I believe I'm on my way to heaven. And I believe my greatest days are ahead to be a miracle in somebody else's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come here, come here. Real quick, watch this, watch this, real quick. I, I, I feel this in the spirit. Accountability. For some in this room that are not watch this and just prayed that or just to hear for the first time here's how you how you continue in victory accountability prayer tomorrow night make yourselves available accountability wednesday night life groups accountability seven o'clock wednesday nights seven o'clock monday night prayer amen and as my wife finishes with this prayer this will be a dismissal prayer and i really believe praise god that that, that God's doing something but I just I just feel led to do this okay uh, for her to pray and then we'll dismiss and remember no Dallas Cowboy jerseys next Sunday
Okay, so right now in the moment, like I was sharing with my husband, it was just a moment, right? Accountability. And something just rose up in me. So right now we're going to do the same thing. So, all right, soldiers, put your arms up. Are you a soldier for Jesus? Are you a warrior for Jesus? All right, we're going to put our our feet together and then our hands together. We're going to say right here, right now, like three times, because we want to shake off those thoughts. We want to shake off what's going to happen today. We want to shake off what happened yesterday or this morning. We want to be in this moment so the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords can touch our minds and renew our hearts and heal us so we can be the man and the woman of God that he created us always to be. All right? So let's do it on the count of three. We're going to do it three times. Ready? Are we ready? One, two, three. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. All right. Thank you, Jesus. So, Heavenly Father, we just lift ourselves up to you, Jesus, and we just thank you, God, for what you're doing in us and through us for your glory. We just lift up our hands to you as a sign of surrender. Everything, God, every single heart here, God, those that came up to the altar and those that were that weren't able to come to the altar, but you see their hearts and you love us right where we're at. So I pray for a special healing and a blessing, Lord God, to restore them, to refresh them, to refuel them, God. That they're not laying by that, they're not laying on the sidelines anymore. They're in the game. They're in the game for the kingdom of God. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. We thank you, Jesus, for every single heart here. We thank you, Lord, that we're walking out of this place better than we walked in. Refresh them, restore them. Holy Spirit, in your perfect timing, completely heal them and deliver deliver them and set them free for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Victory in Jesus. God bless you.